Hi and welcome to our 66th test and measurement video. Ordinarily, capacitors are provided with capacitance and working volts printed or color-coded on the component. The capacitance, as labeled, is generally accurate to a reasonable tolerance. For most applications, a wide range of values will perform as expected. As for working volts, you never know until it is too late, and the only way to test them is destructively. There are several ways to test capacitance. If you have a multimeter with a capacitor test mode, that is the way to go. Otherwise, you have to use the Ohm's mode, by which a certain amount of information, information but not the exact capacitance, can be acquired. This is a Fluke 287 True RMS multimeter, a very high quality instrument. To do a capacitor measurement, plug the black probe into the common port and the red probe into the combination diode capacitance port. With the instrument turned on, press F1, which, as you can see in the display, is the menu. Use the up and down arrow to highlight diode capacitor. Then press F2 corresponding to capacitance. In capacitor mode, the instrument is auto ranging, so it will take care of itself. Now we're ready to take some measurements. Here is an example. This capacitor reads 417 microfarads. This one, a smaller capacitor, reads 9.91 microfarads. And this one, very small, reads 104 nanofarads. That's a very small amount of capacitance. This is an AC receptacle multiplier, commonly called a cube. We might expect that it has a measurable capacitance because there are two electrodes a finite distance apart the air between constituting the electrolytic layer. Since the plates are small and relatively far apart and the electrolytic constant of air is not very high, the capacitance is going to be very small. And as you can see, it does not even make a reading. Another experiment is to wrap paper around one of the probes and bring it in contact with the other probe. We keep the probes parallel and you can see there is a definite capacitance. Electrolytic capacitors can be checked using the Ohm's mode. If the meter is not auto-ranging, set it to the megohm range and connect the probe to the lead. If the device is shorted or open, of course, it is defective. Otherwise, depending on the polarity of the hookup, the resistance in ohms will appear to either rise or fall in a distinctive fashion. The rate appears at first very steady, decelerating noticeably only as the endpoint is approached. 
What is happening is the capacitor charges or discharges due to the meter's internal battery that through a voltage divider supplies something like a 3 volt bias that is used to measure resistance. Electricians testing a motor capacitor call this strange phenomenon counting and it indicates that the capacitor is good. If these types of measurements are not sufficient for your application, the next step up is an LCR meter. Using this instrument, the procedure is the same as for the multimeter in capacitance mode. Just clip onto the leads and take the reading. The LCR meter is a highly sophisticated instrument. For one thing, it has the capability to measure inductance in a component, in electronic equipment, or distributed throughout a communication or power network. The LCR meter works by imposing an AC voltage on the device in question, then voltage across and current through the component are measured. Additionally, in high-end instruments, the LCR meter calculates the phase angle between the voltage and current, thereby displaying the capacitance or inductance with a high degree of repeatability. The oscilloscope can likewise be used to measure capacitance. To do this, a square wave from an arbitrary function generator is applied to a known resistance in series with the unknown capacitance. Use cursors to find the elapsed time. The Y cursor is placed at 63.2% of the waveform peak value, which by definition is the amplitude that corresponds to the time constant of the circuit, which consists of the resistor and capacitor in series. Then the X cursor is dropped down to intersect the X axis, and the distance between this point and the intersection of the X and Y axes, known as the origin, is the elapsed time. Along with the known resistance, the time constant is inserted into the well-known equation C equals R over T, where C is capacitance, R is the value of the resistor, and T is the elapsed time. To facilitate the computation, a 1K resistor should be chosen, and the square wave in the arbitrary function generator should be set at 1 volt, peak to peak, which for a square wave is the same as RMS. There are other methods for determining capacitance or inductance in an oscilloscope. For example, a resonant circuit can be constructed with known and unknown devices, and the peak frequency can be measured. Thanks for watching. New videos are added periodically, so check back frequently.